In this video, I will show you how to get started with creating a simple project for the Nordic NRF 53DK board using the NRF Connect SDK, which uses the VS code. So in this example, we will use LED blinking similar to the one provided default by the manufacturer. And also we will print some debug through the CDC port of the JLink. So let's get started. In order to open the environment, we open the NRF Connect for desktop, select Toolchain Manager, open, and in here we will select the latest SDK and open VS Code. Okay, so it's started in the applications. I got an old application, which I don't use. So let's remove it. And that's what you're probably gonna see Open, uh, opening up the VS Code. So scrolling down, let's add a new application. So create. And let's uh, select the template for the application. And we will use the Blinky. It uses only one LED uh, blinking. So let's select it. And let's name it NRF53. Link. Let's create the application. Click yes. Allow. And select NRF Connect for the terminal. Okay, so now we have the application and we have to add the build configuration. So basically the board, which we will use. Okay, and this is the board which we will use in this example. Only simple application. Let's build it. And by clicking the NRF output, we can see what's going on the build there are quite a lot of files just for this simple project because it uses the Zephyr OS and this is why because we have uh, two cores for the CPU, which is the Nordic uh, NRF5340. So compiling the whole project takes a little bit. Okay, so the build is complete. And this is our main function. So in here we have a structure for the pin we use to drive the LED. This is for checking up if the um, handle for the device is uh, OK. And here is the configuration to the output of the pin. Also checking if it's uh, OK. And in the main loop we have a pin toggle and also check up on this function and wait. So let's uh, add our own pin structures and let's copy this. 
and let's hide the first one okay and now let's go to the definition of the structure to see what we have to declare so first is the device port so this is basically the handle address for the um, GPIO port. This is the pin which you have to use. And those are the flags which you will use. So now let's uh, start with uh, getting the port. Let's declare it. GPIO 28 and now the device to get the device we go to the source files generated Zephyr and in the dev device handles we got uh, the devices declared in here so we got the clock instance GPIO instance the second GPIO instance and UART, which is used for the debug. So now to check which is the instance for the GPIO port zero, we go to the board tab, select GPIO, GPIO zero, and we see this is the address for the GPIO zero controller. So going back, we can see it's this instance so we can copy this part go to back to our main and let's add the pointer to the device and also change it's not a handle just device now let's add the pin number so 28 and the flags for the flags we can go back to the gpio.h file and going up so those are the definitions for the flags we will use only simple gpio output okay and now let's add a few more pins. And let's name them 29. And pin 29. 30. And the last one is the 31 okay uh, we can just remove uh, checking up the port if we would like to check it we have to change uh, from that to the GPIO number we have here but we can also remove it there's no processes running uh, in the code else than the GPIO, so we can just ignore it or remove it. And we don't need to check up on the commands. They are okay, because they are definitely okay. For our board, so let's add our own structures. And by declaring it as GPIO output active, they will be set to high. Okay, now let's change them to the numbers we use. Okay, now in the main loop, we don't need to check up on the function. Just simply switch the GPIO and 
and let's wait 100 milliseconds. Let's copy it a few times. And now in order to make them go with a circle around, we change up the numbering. Okay. And also now let's add a debug print. So we will print the number of the loop we are currently in. Okay. And now to print uh, the debug, we have a function, which is print k. And the first argument is a string. So let's print k. And let's now add the variable in decimal and also our windows new line. And the second argument is the variable for the number of the loop. Okay, and now let's increase the number. Okay, uh, to find this file, you can go to the build tab and in The Zephyr in the NRF Connect SDK, you can go to the kernel Or maybe even not. No, it was OS, not kernel. Let's close it up. Oh, in here, in the lib, OS. And here you have the function. So later you can take a look on it. And now let's uh, go back to the main. And let's uh, build the project. So in order to do that, you go to actions and click build right here. Okay, and it's compiled. So now we can Flash it to the board. Okay, now let's open up the terminal. Now let's select a new terminal, serial port, and the last one. We have default settings, and it's printing the number of the loop. So let's take a look at the board. And the LEDs are blinking as standard. So if we reset it, they start up at the same level. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one.